So today I want to talk about smart beta or market anomalies. Now I do have other videos on this topic. You can watch them by following these links right here. Now in general, when we think about anomalies, we think about the stock market. But today I want to focus in specifically on the fixed income or bond market. Now, one of the challenges in the fixed income market is that over the past 40 years, we've seen this secular decline in interest rates. And the concern would be that if you, even if you had all this data, this is again, 40 years worth of data, a lot of people maybe not, wouldn't even have half of that, that if you found something in there, it would only work when interest rates are slowly declining. Now, if you're lucky enough to have even more data, you'd see that prior to this, we saw a period of roughly 30 years where markets were going up. But again, we have these two kind of big secular periods where interest rates are either rising or interest rates are falling. Now, if you're lucky enough, you could go back all the way to 1800, and this would be a pretty nice data set. First off, we have this period here, long period where interest rates are relatively fat, flat, followed by this period with the secular increase in interest rates for about 30 years. And again, this secular decline in interest rates for about 40 years. This would be a really nice data set. Well, I also wanna point out that in the context of this whole period, this period we're living in now is really unusual. We just have never seen interest rates this low. So that is something that is worth noting. Now, these authors here managed to get all of this data and went ahead and tried to see if they could find any market anomalies. So what did they look at? Well, the usual suspects, they looked at a value measure, looked at a momentum measure, and they looked at a low vol or a, or a low risk measure. Let's go ahead and define those as they did in their paper. In terms of value, they looked at two different measures here. One of them is a real yield number. So that's just going to be a 10-year bond minus the past one year of inflation. They're going to look at a term spread. That's going to be a bond yield minus the risk-free rate. Again, just like it is with stocks, the higher the yield, the more attractive or the cheaper that particular instrument is. They looked at momentum, looked at exactly the same thing that we typically look at in the equity market. So it's the, the last 12 months of return, but you're going to ignore that most recent one month term because we do tend to see some reversals there so that would kind of cloud that measure of a medium term one year momentum in terms of risk uh, they're looking at 36 month betas here keep in mind that they're looking at betas on a maturity level basis so they're going to go long the low beta maturities and they're going to go short the high beta maturities now if you want to think about combining factors, which we often do in equity markets, they did the same thing. So they just said, look, we're going to just equal weight each of these four factors, right? The momentum factor, the low risk factor, and the two value factors come up with a multi-factor score. I have a graphic here that really is about multi-factor authentication, which is not at all what we're talking about. Uh, but I do have a video where I go into some of that a bit and you can watch it by following in this link right here. So let's look at the results. So you can pause this video if you need to, but let me just highlight a few of these things here because there's a lot of data here. We just point out that panel A goes all the way back to 1800 through 2020. You notice that they don't have the beta, the low risk measures there. So panel B, 1922, uh, when they start having that data has that measure there. Point out that the T stat here for the momentum in the later half of the period is not statistically significant, so you can ignore that. But on the flip side, let's go ahead and look over here. Multi-factor model, we got a sharp ratio of 0. 0.56, and we have a T-stat of 8.22. This is really significant data, pretty interesting stuff. Same thing if you look at the later period, higher sharp ratio, slightly lower T-stat, but still, again, very, very significant. Let's also look at this. So what they said is, hey, look, let's just kind of look at a longer term. So I looked at rolling 10-year periods. And you can see here, look, this is pretty nice. Worst case scenario, 72% of the time uh, in a rolling 10-year basis, this strategy works for momentum. Look at that multi-factor models. Uh, you look at the low risk, you look at market, we're talking, you know, 90 and, and above percent in terms of efficacy for these models. Really nice stuff there. They also say, well, look, we have changing environments. Again, pause it if you need to, but let me highlight the yield here, right? So this works in up yield markets and it works in down yield markets. You can, again, pause this if you need to in terms of, you know, recession versus expansion, crisis or non-inflation, high, low, et cetera. Pretty interesting stuff. So if you want to check it all out, you can read the paper yourself. There's a link to it. Hope you enjoy that if you want to get further details. And that's it for today. I'm Brian Kozlowski. Uh, thank you so much. Happy trading out there.